it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseOrient.com and in this video we're going to go over the anatomy of the spine and the ribs. Here I have my assistant Mr. Bones and he has graciously decided to help us so you can learn the vertebrae of the spine and the ribs. Now after this video be sure to test your knowledge on how well you know these items and go to our website RegisteredNurseOrient.com a link should pop up and take the quiz to see how well you know this material because some of this material may be on an anatomy and physiology quiz or test that you have to take. So let's get started. First, let's look at the spine as a whole. How it starts is you have the cervical region, which is made up of seven vertebrae. Then after the cervical region, you have the thoracic, which is made up of 12 vertebrae. Then you have the lumbar, which is made up of five vertebrae. You have the sacral region. And then in the front, on this little guy, you have the coccyx area. And I'm gonna go over all of these individual areas with you. So let's start with the cervical area. There are seven cervical vertebrae. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the function of your cervical vertebrae are to provide protection to your spinal cord because inside this sits the spinal cord and it supports the skull and the body. And you have C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, and C7. And they are located inferior to your skull. Now let's go down to the thoracic vertebrae. Okay, you have 12 thoracic vertebrae. You have T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, T7, T8, T9, T10, T11, and T12. And notice, as I count down and go down, the thoracic vertebrae increase in size and width. Notice that these are a lot larger than these at the top. And the function of the thoracic vertebrae is to house the spinal cord and to protect the spinal cord. And um, now let's go down to our lumbar vertebrae because they are below the thoracic. Okay, the lumbar vertebrae start right here and end right here, right before the sacral area. And you have five of these. You have L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. And the lumbar vertebrae, just as the thoracic vertebrae, they increase in size and width as you go down from L1 to L5. And the function of the lumbar vertebrae is to protect the spinal cord, which runs all the way up through this region, allows for the human body to move for the motion, and it supports the body weight. Now, let's cover the sacral area. It's located at the base of the spine and it consists of one bone that is called the sacrum. Now what's interesting to know is that in children this area is actually made up of five separate bones. But as the body ages they fuse together to form one bone called the sacrum. And this is usually completely fused by the age of 25 or 26. It starts in the late teen years but it's completely fused by them. And People normally divide this up into five parts because it was five different areas. So you have S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5, but it's considered one bone. Now let's go over the coccyx bone. The coccyx bone, also known as the tailbone, is three to five bones actually fused together. And this little bone provides protection while you're sitting and serves as a location where ligaments and muscles attach and it's just this little area right here at the bottom of the skeleton so that's the end of the spine bones now let's go over our ribs you have 12 pairs of ribs so 24 total 12 on this side and 12 on that side and they all touch the thoracic vertebrae, which is what we just went over. Now, there's true ribs, false ribs, and floating ribs. First, let's cover true ribs. Okay, your first seven ribs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, are considered 
your true ribs and they are attached to your sternum via the coastal cartilages these little areas right here and the coastal cartilages what they do is they just make the breathing process easier because your lungs are in here and when you breathe your lungs expand and your rib cage moves and this the coastal cartilages just allow that to happen now let's go to false ribs this is ribs eight through ten so you have one two three four five six seven that was your true ribs and then ribs eight through ten eight nine ten these are your false ribs right here and your false ribs, um, they attach to the coastal cartilage through rib seven, but not to the sternum. So notice that they're not attached to the sternum. Rib seven is attached to the sternum, but the eight, nine, 10, they attach to the seventh rib through coastal cartilage. So they are not attached to the sternum, just the coastal cartilage. Now let's talk about the floating ribs. I'm gonna turn him around just a little bit. And these little ribbies right here, they are really small. And these are ribs 11 and 12. And notice, they are not attached to anything. They're not attached to the sternum or coastal cartilage. They are just all by themselves, in a sense, floating. So that's why they're called floating ribs. So there you have it, the spine and the ribs. Now take the quiz and test your knowledge on how well you know that. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to check out my other anatomy and physiology teaching videos and please subscribe to this YouTube channel.